Today, I will show you how I've changed the look and feel of my game. You can see the difference on your screen right now. Shaders, lighting, shadows, reflections, camera movement, bloom, blur. Many fancy things to talk about. Do you want to know more? Just stay with me for a moment. Hi, I'm Bjorn and I'm making my own game. Tanima is a 2D action roguelike game with a lot of storytelling and exploration, in which you build an army of adorable creatures to fight with a psychopathic living crystal talking to you all the time. There are three biomes for now. Tanima Caves, Imperial Gardens and the Gloomy Forest. The last one has the most matching name in my opinion. The first thing that I wanted to do was reworking the graphics. Old version had too many details that made it not readable in the most situations. I've also cleaned up my graphic sources, moving them from the Inkscape to the Adobe Illustrator. That feels much better. One pain in the ass less, for sure. Okay, let's disable all effects. That's how it looks without any makeup. Now we will go through all effects that I've added. We'll start with some simple geometry effects. Articles, for example. Just to make the world more alive, they will be changing color according to the biome. Uh, yeah, okay, next. Parallax effect. Can you see a difference? Probably not, because we need something else. We will disable this effect for a moment. Let's enable the dynamic camera. Now our view moves along with the player, it also changes the zoom depending on the size of the room. Let's turn on the parallax effect now. I think that you can see what I was talking about. Don't worry, it will look better later. It's time for some simple post-processing effects, like uh, just a little curvature to remind me how my first TV looked like, the vignette to make it feel a little more mysterious, and the bloom, just a little to hide imperfections and boost up depth. The three effects are made by using shaders, a little programs that are running on our graphic card. The main difference between GPU and CPU is that CPU has a few fast cores and GPU has a many much more slower cores. It makes GPU much better for concurrent computing, like processing a pixel to render or mining a bitcoins. It also makes GPU programming much more different than the standard one. Next thing that I had to learn. It was interesting. Game looks a little flat. We will add a lighting. Better? Let's go through it step by step. Okay, let's make it dark. Now let's add an ambient light. Just a little. I'm not sure if it will be visible on the video. Is it? Next, I will add a light in the center of the room. It will scale with the room size. I think it's much more interesting than making a brighter ambient light. What do you think? Now, we will add some spotlights just where the light sources are. I was experimenting with the dynamic shadows before, but I think that this version is better. To add a little more game feel, we will add a little spark when hitting an enemy. Just a little. It's easier to see it in the dark. Post-processing effects can be changed in the runtime. We will make use of it. Let's boost up bloom, vignette and curvature when hitting an enemy and triggering the rage mode. Of course, there is no game feel without a screen shake. That's much better. Okay, so now we will move to the thing that made me start reworking my rendering pipeline at all. But before that, if you would like to help me, you can like this video, subscribe my YouTube channel, tell me what you think and wishlist anyone's team. You can also follow me on Twitter. I am posting there my progress from time to time. Thank you in advance. You are my hero. The gloomy forest was the youngest biome that I've made and still there was something missing. It may be not clear enough, but this character is standing on the water. Yeah, it's green because it's a swamp. You probably know what is missing on this picture. Reflections. There are a few things that I had to do in order to achieve this effect. Taking all the objects that I want to reflect, flipping and scaling them, rendering to the buffer, taking all the reflecting surfaces, making them white and rendering to the buffer, and masking the first buffer with the second one, and rendering it to the screen on the correct layer. It looks much better. To be honest, I wanted to do this much later, but I couldn't look at the graphics and just think about improving it instead of doing so. You know what is similar to the reflections? Shadows. Similar technique. Just make the reflections black and cast it on the different surfaces. These effects made me add a material properties to the game objects so I can apply effects on them much easier. In my first biome, I've added the glass surface with the Tanima liquid underneath. I will give you a few seconds to find out what is missing. Yeah, you are right. Another shadow. 
Let's probably how the refraction works. The same like the previous one, but with a different offset and mask. And now it looks like the glass surface. It's better visible, but it's making a difference. There is no cognitive bias at least. Next thing that I've added was the glow effect. It's made by blooming the glowing objects and blending them with the result. You may say that it could be done by changing the graphics, but it's much easier to animate. Just a little. That's so cute in my opinion. And now we can see the result. Do you see other things that could be improved in the graphics? Let me know what you think. The makeup is done, so it's time to implement the game changing feature that I've designed a few months ago. You will see what I mean in a week or two. The comment section is yours.